we're at lesson 3.5D. This is at the back of lesson 3.5 and it's called going further. We're going to be using properties to justify that negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to 1. We can use properties of operations along with the order of operations to simplify expressions. When we solve a mathematical or real world problem, we can use these properties and rules to justify, that means give a reason, why a step is valid. Knowing how to justify our steps will help us write two column proofs in geometry. We can justify that negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to 1 without replacing the two factors with a 1. We can't use a fact to prove a fact. So for our first step, we have negative 1 times 0 is equal to 0. This is the multiplication property of 0. This is true because the property states that the product of any number and 0 is equal to 0. For our second step, we have negative 1 times negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. This is the inverse property of addition. It states the sum of any number and its opposite is 0. So we have negative 1 plus 1. They make a 0 pair. This is a giant 0 here. We could take away these parentheses and put a 0 here. Since negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0, then we have negative 1 times 0 is equal to 0. And that's true. We can multiply this negative 1 times negative 1 plus a negative 1 by a positive 1 and distribute this positive 1 to each number. The distributive property says multiply a number by the sum or difference is the same as multiplying by each number and then adding or subtracting. We distribute this 1 to each negative 1 and when we multiply that green 1 to each negative 1, it's going to equal a negative 1 each time it's distributed. We have 1 times a negative 1 is negative 1, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. We end up with a negative 1 times a negative 1 plus a negative 1 is equal to 0. That's the identity property of multiplication. It states that multiplying a number by that green 1, this 1, doesn't change its value. If we add a 1 here and a 1 on the other side of the equal sign, we'll be using the addition property of equality. It says adding the same number to each side of an equation, the new equation will have the same solution. So we're making this new equation by adding a 1 here and a 1 here. It's going to have the same solution. So the addition property of equality would be like if we had a 4 plus 3 equals a 7 and we put a 5 on this side and a 5 on this side, well, 4 plus 3 is 7 and 7 is 7. When we add the 5 to each side, now we have 12 equals 12. Do you see how we kept the equation balanced by adding the same number? So we added the same number, but they remained equal. So in that last step, we added a 1 to this side of the equal sign and a 1 to this side of the equal sign using the addition property of equality. We can actually use the associative property of addition and we would be putting a parentheses around this one and around this one so it would look like this. When adding more than two numbers, the grouping of the numbers doesn't change the sum. Now we have these in parentheses together. It would be like if we had taken the previous step, put parentheses here, and took this one away. See? So now this negative 1 plus 1 is inside parentheses from using the associative property of addition. Using the inverse property of addition, the sum of a number and its opposite is 0. We have a negative 1 plus 1 that equals 0. They make a 0 pair. And the identity property of addition says adding 0 to a number doesn't change its identity. So by having this 0 here and this 0 here didn't change the identity of this equation. We could take this away and this away and we would be 
left with a negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to 1. Look at that. We showed that negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to positive 1. We did it using all those properties. So now let me show you something with the distributive property. Here we have 2 times 3 and 5 tenths plus a negative 3. Using the distributive property, we can distribute the 2 to the 3 and 5 tenths so that we have 2 times 3 and 5 tenths. There's a plus sign here, so we're going to have a plus sign there. And we distribute the 2 to the negative 3, so we have 2 times negative 3. We can solve 2 times 3 and 5 tenths, that would be a 7. And we solve 2 times negative 3, that would be a negative 6. So now we have 7 plus negative 6. That's equal to a positive 1. And we can rewrite this original expression as repeated addition. We have 2 times a 3 and 5 tenths plus a negative 3. So we have a 3 and 5 tenths plus a negative 3 and a 3 and 5 tenths plus a negative 3. And using the commutative and associative properties, we can change their order and regroup them. Instead of having a negative 3 here, we'll move this 3 and 5 tenths here so we have them together. And instead of having this negative 3 here, we move it back here so these are together. These negative 3s are together. So now we have 2 3 and 5 tenths, and we have 2 negative 3s. So we have 2 times 3 and 5 tenths plus 2 times negative 3, just like we had up here. Since we have 2 times 3 and 5 tenths plus 2 times negative 3, both factors are multiplied by a 2. We can rewrite this expression as 2 on the outside of parentheses that contain 3 and 5 tenths plus a negative 3. That brought us back to the beginning for the distributive property, where we distributed the 2 to the 3 and 5 tenths and to the negative 3. So we're finished with part D. We're going to move on to the last part, applying properties strategically. So we're going to talk about all these properties a little bit more and see how we can strategically apply them to expressions. Please join me for the last part of the lesson. And as always, I hope you have a really wonderful day. Bye.